In this video episode adventure, we are tongue oiling the whole exterior and interior of our wooden tiny house. A messy undertaking for sure, that's not unlike everyday life. No matter how much any of us want to jump from point A to point B, life is a journey and it's often messy. It's not about how messy or perfect our lives are that determine our level of daily happiness. It's the outlook in which we choose to live our daily lives that empowers our ability to live a happy life filled with wonderment. Before we jump into this Finding Wonder experience, we are going to take a moment to share about who we are and what we are doing here. Hello friends, we are four life adventure buddies, best friends, mother and daughter, and two wonder pups on a journey to find, appreciate, and share daily wonders and joys with the world. We are transitioning from a lifestyle based in a regular house into a traveling tiny house RV. Everything in our life is changing right now, from where and how we are going to live, to how we earn a living while pursuing our heart and soul dreams. While we certainly have a lot to do and a lot to figure out right now, we are adventurers, filmmakers, artists, dancers, teachers, and writers on a mission to share wonders with the world and with you. Join us as we find wonder amidst our busy days. With so much to do, there is still wonder and joy to be found. So the builder put a original stain on our exterior siding. Now we're going to give it a rinse, kind of wash it up and prepare it to be able to put on additional exterior oil protection for our siding. That way we'll know that it's really protected from the weather before we head into the fall and winter. With you yes. the sun is shining 24 seven. Cause when we're together, it feels like we're in heaven. If it will get dark, you'll be my million stars. I know I can lean on you. Ooh, you catch me like a leaf falling from a tree. If I'll be a shooting star, you make a wish. No, I don't fake this kind of feeling. Never felt so real. It feels so good to be like finally working on our house and getting to know every board and every knot because this is gonna be our home and where we go, go visit places and go on adventures from. And so by cleaning it and oiling it, it really feels like it's our, it's our getting to know each other. Um, getting to know each other time. So on this sunny day in early autumn, we hosed down and prepared the exterior of our house for its upcoming tongue oil finish. If you haven't seen us much yet, then let me just say now that we generally do a really good job of turning a hardworking sort of task into a fun-filled finding wonder adventure. This doesn't mean we love working, but when we do, we seek out ways to make the work be a bit more playful. Just like we had to mask all the inside of our tiny house, we are masking the exterior parts of our tiny house that we do not want to get messied up with tongue oil. In our mission to create a mostly non-toxic and the healthiest home possible that we can afford, we found a really great made in the USA company creating very natural wood finishing products. For this project, we are using a product made for exterior applications. It's made from 100% natural tongue oil, zinc and pine essential oil. While this product is 100% natural and quite safe to work with and handle, it is very messy and oily. So painter coveralls, a shower cap and face mask sure make cleanup afterwards much easier. Also, protective eyewear and face wear is important to wear. This is not the type of stuff that you want in your eyeballs. And when working above your head 
and high on a ladder, protective eyewear is a must. Of course, autumn is upon us and the days are shortening and sooner rather than later, it's going to be dark. Our optimistic calculation for how much time we needed to put on a first coat of tongue oil on the first side of the tiny house before dark was a little off. Darkness came and we carried on. Sometimes when you are in the midst of an adventure, it's best not to ask too many questions, though rather to carry on with the plan. And we did, on into darkness. While we would never suggest tongue oiling in the dark, this experience did create a very noteworthy, memorable evening filled with struggle and triumph. After catching some sleep, we woke the next morning to see that our in-the-dark work had gone mostly okay. We got back to work with another coat of tongue oil on that same side. It's more beautiful than I could have even hoped for. Our house came to us with a single coat of exterior stain. Notice the wood here and the wood here. As you can see, it just shines like a wooden boat. In all, we used two and a half gallons of this outdoor defense oil for three coats of finish to protect all four sides of our tiny house. We feel a bit like forest creatures, preparing and fortifying their den site for the upcoming fall, winter, and spring season weather. And we did it! We successfully got the exterior of our tiny house tongue oiled before the rainy Pacific Northwest weather really got underway. You might be wondering, what is tongue oil? Let's set the stopwatch and share with our watching friends what tongue oil is in 100 seconds. Get set, get ready, go. Tongue oil is an oil made from pressing the seed from the nut of the tongue tree. Tongue trees are native to Southern Asia. It's unknown exactly how long people have been making tongue oil. There are records of it in early Chinese writing from Confucius about 400 BC. Historically, tongue oil was used for waterproofing wooden ships. A tongue oil wonderment is its ability to actually penetrate and seep into the wood versus just sitting on top of the wood like many other wood finishes do. Tongue oil hardens when it is exposed to air. A tongue oil wonderment is that it dries transparent, it's food safe, it's waterproof, it's flexible, and it doesn't mold or turn wood yellow. Pure tongue oil smells nutty. That nutty smell does go away after a while. Tongue oil provides a relatively hard surface that's impervious to dust, alcohol, acetone, and other acids like vegetable and fruit acids. Like orange juice? Yes, like orange juice. Good! Tongue oil is ideal for kitchenware, cutting boards, and toys because it's such a safe wood finish. Because we have tongue oil, the whole interior of our tiny house, we know that we could eat off of any surface. Our walls are food grade. Another cool tongue oil wonderment is that when tongue oil seeps into the wood, it penetrates it and gives it a perpetual wet wood look, which really makes the wood grain pop. I love that. Our favorite tongue oil wonderment is that it's non-toxic, environmentally friendly, and a completely natural wood finish. Whew. <laughs> the time has finally come. 
We now get to start tongue oiling the interior of our tiny house. Inside our tiny house, we are using a half and half blend of pure tongue oil and citrus solvent. The citrus solvent is made from 98% pure citrus peel oil and 2% water. The citrus solvent is totally natural and is a very helpful thinner ingredient that liquefies the tongue oil so that it can more easily penetrate the wood. After brushing and toweling it all on, oxygen begins reacting with the tongue oil and the tongue oil begins curing and giving the wood a hard waterproof finish. Meanwhile, all the liquid from the citrus solvent is evaporating. A pretty cool process. A chemistry wonderment for sure. The long-awaited moment. The moment I touch the wool. Here we go. Our once very pine wood smelling house does not smell like pine anymore. The citrus solvent essential oil smell is so strong that now our house smells like the inside of one giant orange. We love oranges and eat citrus a lot. That being said, the smell of this citrus solvent is intoxicating. Airflow and fresh air is a must when working with this stuff or else you get quite a bit woozy in the head, trust me. This oiling is quite a process. Yeah. <laughs> I'm taking care of things on the lower level. Megan's up in the higher level. We've got fans going in the house. It's actually a really awesome product though. A product that does not have VOCs, although it is quite, um, quite stout in its uh, citrus solvent. So um, it, it kind of makes your eyes want to water. Um, pretty exciting though. Fortunately, in time, the citrus solvent will evaporate and our house won't smell like a giant intoxicating orange explosion forever. While tongue oiling the interior of our tiny house, it rained a lot outside, which made opening up windows and doors tough because then rain would blow inside the house and get things wet. Fortunately, problem solving and creative solutions are born out of need. Sometimes it's dealing with day after day challenges that shows oneself how resourceful and strong one truly is. In all, we used 12 gallons of half and half tongue oil and citrus solvent to give all of the raw wood surfaces in our tiny house five coats of finish. 12 gallons in 12 long days of hard, messy work. While getting the job done was the successfully achieved goal of all that work, the real wonder-filled gift of the whole endeavor was the wonderment experienced along the way. So you may remember from our last episode that we spent hours and hours and days and weeks sanding the inside of our tiny house here. And specifically these beams got loads and loads of my effort because they were really scratched and, and dinged up and rough and, and splintering. And so I did so much sanding on the beams and they were essentially just dark, dark wood. 
Well, as I put tongue oil on them, each one became quite different. And like this beam, the getting to see the knots, the features of the knots started coming out with the tongue oil and the beams are beautiful. And each one's a little bit different. Um, there's some that have the knots like this one. There's a really dark, 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 deep one. There's a red one. There's one that has really cool like blonde um, streaks in the grain. So it was really, it was all, worth all the work. And then it was fun, the tongue oil and get to see the beams come to life because they're a really special part of the ceiling of our tiny house. It feels so good to have done that and really nourish the wood of our tiny house. I never thought the whole process would take so long or that it would even be quite as messy as it was. And I, I mean, I literally soaked in this stuff, not intentionally, but by default, just because the whole process was so messy and the, the oils dripping downwards and down the walls and, and anywhere it's on the floor becomes an oil slick. And so the whole process was so messy, but it feels so good to have, have done it and, and help to protect our walls and ceiling in a way that um, will take care of them as well as is really healthy. Um, for the application, as well as for our future living in this tiny house. One of the greatest wonderments of this whole tongue oiling process was seeing the color and grain and like dimensionality of the wood come through as I oiled it. Because when you first put the oil on, it's like immediately putting water on the wood. You suddenly get this whole other color that wasn't there when it was just the dry, unfinished wood. And then as it the oil starts to seep in, you do another coat and then another coat and then another coat and then another coat. And with every coat, it just like deepens and richifies. And the funnest part was that in general, like all of the pine tongue and groove look the same. But then as you tongue oil, certain boards would um, become darker. And like these two boards were some of my favorite boards. They just, they almost got like, redder and they have become like the darker you can't really tell on film but they became like just kind of like feature boards and it's like it was almost like a fun mystery surprise to see like which boards would like get darker or which boards would just stay totally light no matter how many coats of tongue oil so i found um great wonderment in the surprise and discovery of finding out which boards would go what color as I tongue oiled. So it's been about a week since I did my last coat of tongue oil um, downstairs, a little bit longer up here. And our walls are still like oily. I mean, if you touch them or wear, you know, Let's just say you don't want to wear some clothing that you don't want to have oiled if you come into the house right now and touch any of the wood surfaces. Um, so it's it's really exciting to kind of witness our house though and kind of see it uh, curing. So while we wait for the tongue oil to cure for these 30 days, we're keeping the house like really airy. We're opening the windows in all the dry days um, that we possibly can, as well as we're running heat because dry and warmth helps tongue oil cure. And we're so excited to get into this house. So we definitely want to help it help this tongue oil cure. It's looking gorgeous, gorgeous.
Are you one of those people who enjoys like going to the beach and getting rocks wet and seeing all the colors come out? I know I am. I've always enjoyed wet rocks and all of their beautiful colors. And now after having this experience with tongue oil and this wood, I would say it was it's that same exact thing. When you make something wet, um, whether with water or whether with the oil as we have here, the colors just come out. I mean, it goes from light and almost dull to, to bright and dimensional. And it's really beautiful. So if you're one of those people, then perhaps you're just gonna have to finish some wood with tongue oil. You'll find great wonder in the experience, I think. <laughs> so this is the base floor of the upstairs sleeping loft. And it was so exciting tongue oiling this. I mean, I thought that this tongue and groove was fun, but this floor was incredible. It was really light colored and with the, the wood grain patterns. And as I, as I oiled, it literally would just like darken and deepen um, with this like gorgeous red color. And it was, it was literally, it was fun. It was brought me great wonder to watch the reaction of the wood soaking in the tongue oil. And then each coat I did, the color deepened some more. And it's beautiful. It's like beautiful designs that I just love looking at and finding different shapes in the, in the grain. It's really cool. If there is any encouragement we can offer from our experiences, it is to find and celebrate the wonders of everyday life, even when you're doing a less than favorite task. Life is too short to miss out on feeling the joy of the wonderments of daily life. This is a big, big, big deal for us. And we have, there's so many changes going on in our life. It's, everything is different. Everything is so different. And we're taking a giant, giant leap as we launch ourselves into this new life. And there are so many unanswered questions. But we're taking the leap and we're about to have our little house. And that is so special. But even almost more special than that is being committed to finding the wonder and joy and reasons for gratitude amidst it all. Because uh, many days it can feel quite overwhelming. And yet having that purpose and being committed to sharing our experiences of finding wonder with you keeps up a certain focus. And that focus for finding the wonder amidst it all helps keep me with some perspective and it keeps my heart lighter and so I just really want to thank you for being here and for your support and appreciation and for your comments they're really really meaningful and so thank you thank you for watching and thank you for listening so we're almost there pretty soon eventually we'll be able to move into our house. This is exciting. So we're bringing you along with us. Thanks for coming.